हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे इज अवर टॉपिक इज अ स्कॉल्प व्हाट इज अ स्कॉल्प व्हाट आर द एक्सटेंट ऑफ द स्कॉल्प व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट लेयर्स एंड द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ दोज लेयर्स व्हाट इज द ब्लड सप्लाई नर्व सप्लाई एंड अप्लाइड एनाटॉमी ऑफ द स्कॉल्प ऑल दिस थिंग्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस वीडियो सो सी द वीडियो अप टू द लास्ट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थिंग व्हाट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द स्कॉल्प तो स्कॉल्प इज द सॉफ्ट टिश्यू व्हिच इज कवरिंग अवर क्रेनियल वॉल्ट व्हाट आर द एक्सटेंट मींस एंटीरियरली पोस्टीरियरली एज वेल एज ऑन टू द साइड्स सो एंटीरियरली हियर वी हैव द ऑर्बिट एंड ऑन टू द ऑर्बिट सुपीरियर पार्ट दैट इज द सुप्रा ऑर्बिटल मार्जिन सो स्कॉल्प इज एंटीरियरली स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द सुप्रा ऑर्बिटल मार्जिन एंड पोस्टीरियरली इट इज हियर देर इज अ प्रेजेंस ऑफ द एक्सटर्नल ऑसिपिटल प्रोटिब्रेंस and along with that there is a one line which is known as the superior nuchal line so scalp posterior side attached with the external occipital protuberance and superior nuchal line now on to the sides what is the extent of the scalp on to the sides it is a extended up to the superior temporal line so here there is a presence of the temporal bone here there is a temporal fascia so superior part of the temporal fascia which is known as the superior temporal line that's how it is anteriorly posteriorly and on to the sides it is extended now what are the layers of the scalp so name itself suggest s c a l and p s which stands for the skin the superior most layer of the scalp is the skin what is the characteristic of this skin this skin of the scalp is thick than the normal body skin as well as it is a very much hairy means at per particular area there is a lots of amount of hair present onto the scalp what is the second layer so second layer is known as the connective tissue also it is known as the superficial fascia of the scalp and what are the important structures which are passing from these layers so as you can see into the diagram also blood vessels arteries veins nerves mainly passing from this layer of the scalp as well as this is second layer which connects from to the skin to the third layer which is known as the aponeurosis so for the mcq aspect scalp vessels are passing from the which layer then the answer is the second layer which is known as the connective tissue as well as the superficial fascia of the scalp now the third layer which is known as the aponeurosis it is also known as the epicranial aponeurosis it is the dense fibrotic tissue and this third layer is tightly attached with the skin with the help of this connective tissue so if we do the dissection these three layers are separated together that's why they are known as the surgical layer of the scalp so these upper three layers are known as the surgical layers of the scalp this aponeurosis is having a important muscle and what is the name of that muscle so in this diagram it has been shown anterior side it is having the frontalis muscle and the posterior side it is having the insertion of the occipitalis muscle this frontalis muscle into the midline they are converging they are joining towards each other this frontalis muscle having a no bony insertion over the anterior part it is uh, inserted into the third layer of the scalp on to the posterior side it is having the muscle occipitalis so into the software we will also look the frontalis muscle as well as the occipitalis muscle so occipitalis muscle if you look both the sides of the occipitalis muscle they are different bellies of the occipitalis muscle and for the frontalis muscle you can see here into the midline these frontal bellies are coming together and joining onto the midline both are the part of the scalp and they are into the inserted into the third layer of the scalp now the fourth layer which is known as the loose connective tissue and this fourth and the fifth layer are tightly attached 
for the loose connective tissue you should remember that it is the dangerous layer of the scalp here you can see loose areolar tissue and this loose areolar tissue why it is known as the dangerous layer of the scalp because onto the fifth fourth layer there is a presence of the emissary veins now what are the emissary veins these are the veins from the outer side they are connected inside with the intracranial venous sinuses so inside there are the presence of the venous sinuses inside the skull and these emissary veins so you can see here this is the loose areolar tissue then the fifth layer and from here some veins are passing and deep inside the you can say venous sinuses here also you can see emissary veins are passing now fifth layer which is known as the pericranium what is the characteristic of the pericranium so pericranium is also a fibrous layer but it is a loosely attached to the surface of the bones but it is a tightly attached to the sutures so you can easily say that whenever the sutures come this attachment is very much tight so if the pericranium is present over here then you can easily say it will attach the tightly with this suture which is a coronal suture here superior facial temporal here posterior side posterior side it is attached with to the lambdoid suture onto the midline it is a tightly attached with the sagittal suture it means this pericranium is tightly attached over here over here over here over here so if the fluid collection is between the pericranium and the bone then those swellings will take the shape of the bone so you can easily remember that why the there is a bony swelling which is just like the bone shaped then you must remember that might be the fluid collection is between the fifth layer and the bony skull so that's how the fifth characteristic of the five layers we have finished now we will moving towards the blood supply and the venous drainage of the scalp as well as the nerve supply so for the blood supply you must remember there are five arteries onto the one half of the skull that means onto the another half this right half left half then also right half also is having the five arteries but but in this diagram there is a presence of the nerve we will seeing into the further so into the if i divide into the one quadrant so you can say anterior quadrant having a main three arteries and posterior quadrant is having the two arteries now what are the name of these arteries so onto the onto the anterior quadrant what are the arteries the name is a supratrochlear and the second one is known as the supraorbital and the third one is the superficial temporal artery these two arteries are supratrochlear and supraorbital are actually branch of the ophthalmic artery and ophthalmic artery is the branch of the internal carotid artery and this is a superficial or temporal artery on the posterior side you just need to remember the artery which is a present posterior to the auricle this is the auricle that's why name is the posterior auricular and on to the most posterior bar there is a presence of the occipital bone there is a branch of occipital artery so you can easily remember that posterior auricular and the occipital artery on to the posterior quadrant actually this is superior facial temporal artery posterior and occipital all are the branches from the external carotid artery especially superficial temporal it is the terminal branch of the external carotid artery and the posterior auricular and the occipital are the posterior branches of the external carotid artery so that's how this scalp is very much richly supplied by the blood that's why whenever there is a bleeding from the scalp is there it is a profuse but just not because of the rich blood supply but as the vasoconstriction of the arteries are no so not so much that's why it also bleeds very heavily so for stopping the bleeding we must apply the pressure from the outside which is known as the applying the external pressure onto the scalp will stop the bleeding so let's study the nerve supply of the skull for the nerve supplying we must remember this is a one half nerve one half nerve supply of the one half of the skull 
but on to the other side also the same nerves are supplying so artery if you are asked total how much artery supplying so on to the one side five and another side five total 10 arteries but if you are asked how many nerves are supplying the skull then on to the one side there is a presence of the 10 now and on the another side there is a presence of the 10 now now what are those 10 nerves so for the remembering that we will divide into the anterior quadrant and the posterior quadrant on to the one quadrant you just remember there is the presence of the five nerves in this five now if you divide there is a presence of the four sensory nerves and only one motor on to the posterior side also you just need to remember there is a four there are four sensories and one motor now now what are these sensory nerves so the anterior branches name are just like the same as the arteries those are two names are a supra trochlear nerve and the supra orbital nerve fine now another two names you need to remember related to the temporal so actually all the threes are temporal but one is coming from the zygomatic part that is a zygomatico temporal one is from the auricle to temporal that is the auricular temporal so these four are the sensory nerves supra trochlear supra orbital zygomatico temporal and auricular temporal these are four sensory now which is remaining that is the femoral uh, that is the facial branch now which is known as the temporal branch of the facial now you also remember we are remembering the five branches of the facial now the uppermost is the temporal which also supplies the scalp now on to the posterior side uh, what are the sensories and the motor now for that you just need to remember three occipital and the two auriculars now what are the three occipital nerves so from the occipital three that is a third occipital then there is a greater occipital then there is a lesser occipital so that's how three occipital third greater lesser now what are the two auriculars so from there you remember great auricular which is the sensory and the only motor now onto the posterior side that is the posterior auricular nerve which is also the branch of the facial nerve so mainly motor supply of the scalp is uh, with the facial uh, now so now just apply the same logic onto the another another side uh, it is also having the 10 nerves the supra trochlear supra orbital and the three temporal zygomatico auricular temporal and the temporal and to the posterior side three occipital third occipital uh, greater occipital lesser occipital and two auriculars they are the posterior auricular and the greater venous drainage now. of the scalp on to the anterior side the name are just same as like the arteries as well as the nerve those are the supra orbital vein and the supra trochlear vein these two veins actually combining onto the medial angle or you say medial side of the eye and forming the angular vein and these angular vein then continuing as the facial vein and this facial vein combines with the one vein which we discussed later onto the posterior side which is the most important vein here the vein is known as the superficial temporal and onto the most posterior side what is the venous drainage then it is known as the posterior auricular vein so just remember these four main veins supratrochlear supraorbital then the superficial temporal and the posterior auricular vein now just remember how they are reaching towards the heart so remember this is a superficial temporal which combines with the maxillary vein this is the maxillary vein so these two veins are combining and forming one vein which is known as the retromandibular vein superficial temporal and the maxillary combining forming the retromandibular this retromandibular divides into the two parts one is known as the anterior division another is known as the posterior these anterior division combines with this common facial now these combine with the facial now and forming the common facial so how the common facial vein is formed so common facial vein is formed by anterior division of the retromandibular and the facial and forming the common facial and these common facial going into the internal jugular vein now this posterior division of the retromandibular and the posterior auricular posterior posterior two posteriors posterior division of retromandibular and posterior auricular and forming a external jugular vein very important question 
how the external jugular vein is formed it is formed by the posterior division of the retromandibular and the posterior auricular vein and it is going into the subclavian vein and internal jugular vein the end here this part is going into the internal jugular vein now what is the lymphatic drainage of the scalp the scalps drain mainly two main groups of the lymph nodes mostly anterior part and the posterior part anterior part which is going mainly into the pre auricular as well as the parotid group of lymph nodes and posterior parts which is mainly going into the posterior auricular and the or you can say mastoid and occipital group of lymph node actually two main parts it is dividing anterior half and the posterior so anterior half is going into the anterior lymph nodes and the posterior half into the posterior so anterior into the anterior auricular you can say that is a pre auricular and the posterior into the posterior auricular anteriorly into the parotid and the posterior into the occipital group of the lymph nodes applied anatomy of the scalp as the scalp is having a abundance amount of the sebaceous glands these sebaceous glands are secreting the sebum if these glands are blocked their outcome there if they are not able to drain outside then the sebum will be accumulated inside and it will generate the sebaceous cyst so what is the cyst it is the uh, fluid filled cavity lined by the epithelium is known as the cyst so here it is uh, accumulated with the sebum that's why it is known as the sebaceous cyst they can be multiple here you can see there are the multiple uh, sebaceous uh, cyst now the important another anatomy that is known as the black eye yes you can see here a uh, human beautiful face has been a uh, distorted you can say there is a purple color or you can say uh, reddish to purple color is present over here so why it happens so you just need to remember that uh, the third layer which in the fourth layer between them there is a gap so if the fluid is uh, present between the third and the fourth layer then the it scalp is not uh, tightly attached onto the supra orbital uh, margin the third layer so this fluid between the third and fourth layer that easily can accumulate into the superior eyelid and that will results into the black eye so what is the black eye so if there is a collection of blood is between the loose connective tissue and the third layer and the fourth layer then it can easily travel anteriorly and accumulated into the superior eyelid yes it can accumulate into the eyelids and that will results into the black eye now if there is a bleeding from the scalp is there that must be we given compression from the outside as well as uh, which is the dangerous layer of the scalp that is the fourth layer so if there is any accumulation of fluid into the fourth layer it will easily spread inside into the into the uh, you can say intracranial venous sinuses so that is the end of the video How